In this video, I'm gonna show you four different ways on how to achieve a type on effect inside Premiere Pro. Depending on the situation, each method will have its own time and place in which you would wanna use it. So I hope you stick around for the whole video to check them all out. This first one is pretty quick and easy. It's just a simple wipe of the text. So with the type tool right here in the toolbar, we're going to go to our program monitor, click inside the program monitor and type in our first title. What really helps here inside Premiere Pro is to go to the essential graphics window and hit align and transform. And there we got it right in the middle. All we have to do from this point to wipe it on is go to our effects panel, click and let's search for something called wipe. We already have a wipe transition built into Premiere Pro. So I'm gonna click and drag that onto the beginning of my graphic clip. Now, when I click play, it wipes it on. Now this looks a little artificial because yes, it's just a wipe transition, but if you speed this up a little bit and you add a little bit of typing sound effects underneath it, you get something like this. That might be all you need, but if you're looking for a little bit more manipulation of the title, let's do something else. The next method is different because you'll have complete manipulation on how the words or letters are keyframed on. Same start as before though, we're gonna go to the type tool click there and we can click anywhere in the program monitor. And again, you could start typing your title, but there's one key component that you need to pay attention to. And that's whether you want your words to be center aligned or left aligned. If I were to be left aligned and type, hit that like button, notice that it types over from the left. But if I were to redo that and be center aligned, Notice how when it types on everything is in the center. For this particular example, I want it to be center aligned. So I know that my text is gonna be center aligned. And now that I know that, I'm going to go to my align and transform and put it into position. Now that you have the framing of where you want the title to end up, we can go to the effects controls for that clip in text. In this drop down menu, next to source text, there's toggle on animation. And what I like to do is work backwards. So I'm gonna move my playhead a little bit further into the clip and I'll toggle on my animation for source text. This is where I want it to end up. So I'm gonna go a couple more frames in and I'll highlight the word button and delete that. Next, I wanna go a couple more frames before. And one tip here is to put your mouse above the step back one frame button on the program monitor, as opposed to using the arrow keys, because when you use the arrow keys to go back in a frame, it, all it does is just move the cursor. So I'm gonna go back a couple frames and then delete the word like in that space, go back a couple more frames, delete that, go back a couple more frames and delete the whole phrase. So now, when I play this back, it types on by word. If you want to make this slower or faster, you can manipulate these keyframes however you want. Or if you want a quicker way to do the whole clip at once, just go to your rate stretch tool right here. If you don't see that, just click and hold right here and go to rate stretch. Or you could hit B and click and drag this to make it faster. So. That's much faster. If I click and drag this to make it slower, that's much slower. You take that same concept and apply it to letters instead of words. So I've toggled on the animation for my source text and I bring my cursor to the end of the word, create a keyframe, then I step back, delete, step back, delete, step back, delete, step back, delete, step back, so on and so forth. Now I've already done this and you can type on by letter like that. Again, if you wanna slow down or speed this up, just bring up your rate stretch tool and make it slower or faster depending on however you need it to look. But if you're looking for something a little bit more stylistic, I would recommend just screen recording yourself typing on a screen. The first one would be typing on a cell phone. One of the simplest ways I've found to achieve this is using Instagram. I'm at Javier Mercedes X if you wanna give me a follow, but how I would do it is just create a new story. My phone is just face down on my desk. If I were to take a photo, I would go to the three dots in the top right, go to draw, and with any of these colors down on the bottom, I'm gonna choose green for green screening it. Just tap and hold your finger on the screen and it will turn the whole background to that color. I'll hit done, go to my fonts, and right now I'm using the type font and I will type in whatever I want to. Coincidentally, if you do use this kind of type font, if you hit the top right, it will actually type it on for you, which is kind of nice. But for this example, I'm gonna turn that off and I'm just screen recording me typing on the phone. Once you have your screen recording inside the computer, all you need to do is go to your effects panel, look up ultra key, click and drag that onto your clip, 
and click and select the color that's in the background. So it's that green color. And then we wanna get rid of what's around the words. So I'm gonna look up crop, pull that on and click the word crop. And once you click the word crop, you can now pull these handles to where you would like to on your clip. Now I have this typing on effect, which is actually me typing. So the cadence at which I type on the letters makes sense because it's natural, which leads me to the last method for this. And that's just typing on your actual computer. A couple tips for if you're using something like Google Docs to achieve this effect while you're recording your screen is go over here to your Zoom and fit it to your screen as well as make it full screen on your computer. The other thing that I do is make sure that the font size is big enough. Just make sure that it fills up your screen as much as possible. Once you have that screen recording inside Premiere Pro, there's a couple ways that you can get rid of that background. Now, you could go here to Ultra Key and do the same method that we did before by clicking the eyedropper and clicking the white. But as you can see, there's still some white around the letters. And if you go to matte generation and bring up the transparency, that might get you what you're looking for. But I think there's a better way of going about doing this or a cleaner way. So what I like to do is go to the effects and look up invert underneath channel. We're gonna drag that on. So we're inverting all of the channels. So now this is white instead of black. It's almost like you're putting it in dark mode. In the channel, we're gonna go to luminance. That way it keeps all of these colors, but it still inverts the black and white. Go back to our effects and look up Luma key and underneath keying, we're gonna pull that onto our clip. And now we have a clean key that we can work with. From here, we'll do the same technique of grabbing our crop, popping that on, highlighting the word crop, and then pull the handles to where we want it to crop. If you ever wanted to change the color of the font, you could go back to your effects, look up tint, pull tint onto your clip. You would map your white to whatever color you see fit. So if I wanted this to be red, I can make it be red. If I want it to be green, I can make it be green. On that note, if this video was helpful, don't forget to hit that like button. My name's Javier Mercedes, and I hope you're out there living a life of abundance. Bye.